What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new tactic video. Today we've got a very unique shape. It is classed as a 4-2-1-1-2. A very different shape and a very good tactic. That being said, if you do enjoy the tactics, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let's go through the results. what's going on guys it is josh from fm scout i just want to quickly say as well if you do enjoy the tactics you can comment below right now any formations you want to see because i like going through the comments and i can actually suggest the tactics we do display on this channel so if you want to see any crazy five backs any four backs any different formations or anything do let me know and we're going to start today by testing with a very team that is close to my heart a local team ipswich town and you know what? With Ipswich Town, we actually had a very, very good season. I will be honest, the English Cups, we were never going to win them. But we got to the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup, the Skybet Championship. We actually come out and put on quite a good display. Only losing four games, winning 38 games, as you would expect. Of course, the Premier League's been a little bit ropey so far. But it is against Liverpool and Man City. Two very tough fixtures. George Hurst with 31 goals. We've got Johnson in first place of the average rating. Hurst and Broadhead finish up second and third. Leif Davis, 11 back who I think is honestly a fantastic option. I think he's really Premier League quality. I do think that. Murat coming in there with the most clean sheets as well. A real, real, real strong season. Stat-wise, 131 for Ipswich Town. Most shots, fewer shots against, the fewest conceded, and the most clean sheets. I will say possession-wise, you're not going to be too competitive because this is not based around possession. With the bigger teams, you might have it. But with the sort of, you know, less quality teams, don't get me wrong, Ipswich are a very good team in the championship. But actual individual sort of player quality wise, passing, dribbling, etc. You're not going to hold that possession level. But it's OK, because when you're scoring 131 goals, you can't really complain. Now, going over to the date hub, we are going to be scoring 2.85 goals per game, only conceding 0.67. So... Once again, we are looking at a team that are scoring easily over two goals to what we are going to be conceding. So every game is going to be reasonably comfortable. An 87% pass completion, a very good amount of shots per game. And you know what? For an Ipswich Town side, we made it look very easy. Next up, and probably the most impressive set of results of the entire video, that is going to be West Ham, as we are going to win the treble, the FA Cup, the Carabao Cup, and the Premier League. And as you can see right now, we didn't only win the Premier League, we nearly went invincible. Two games off going invincible, losses against Brighton and Everton, not even losing to a real top, top team there. Volkrug, 38 goals, he thrived in this system. Volkrug, Ward-Prowse, first and second in the average rating, and Creswell has still got at his old age with 25 assists. Clean sheets, we're not going to be first. We're going to be all the way down in third, which is actually still very good, considering we have got to remember we are West Ham. We're not in the top four teams. Now, going over it, our real key attribute, again, is going to be the goals being scored. Yes, we're good at conceding goals, only 27, but our real standout is our attack and play. Ripping shots at goal, hardly any shots against us. Possession-wise, again, I will show it, we're not going to be that competitive, but because we're dribbling all the time, we're ripping off shots, you're not going to hold on to the ball too much. But if you love attack and football, this is going to be the tactic for you. Now, going over to the Date Hub, it is going to be looking at 3.45 goals per game, nearly a goal jump up there, 0.71 conceded, over 20 shots a game, a great pass completion, and you know things are good when you're scoring more goals compared to the Premier League average. And that average includes a team that has Haaland and De Bruyne. And United dominated possession, but we won the cup final, a penalty to kick things off. And we actually go again in the 81st minute with Jared Bowen into Rodriguez. A real good finish there from Corne. They get a penalty goal, but it means nothing. Then over to Bayer Leverkusen. Again, a real strong season. Winning the Bundesliga, winning the Pockel, winning the German Super Cup. Unfortunately, getting knocked out by PSG in that Champions League. But the Bundesliga was a real strong season. Only three losses against Borussia Dortmund, Frankfurt and Werder Bremen. So again, not losing against Bayern, meaning we beat them twice. Schlick comes in with 30 goals. Terrier comes in there with 16. Hope that's how you say that. They've got all three players in the average rating. Grimaldo and Hoffman in first and second with the assists. Haradeki there with the most clean sheets and I even think when we go to possession we are going to be in the top five because it is quite easy to get possession in the Bundesliga 53% of the ball is quite an average to be honest again the real core here is going to be the goal scored 30 plus goal advantage over Dortmund over Bayern for example most shots fewer shots against most dribbles fewest conceded and the most clean sheets what I love about these sort of tactics which Naps makes are they're also different. You have one tactic that dominates possession, might not score as many goals, but when he makes an attacking tactic, 
you're in for a real big treat because he knows what to do. Now, the data hub, we are going to be looking at a staggering 3.32 goals per game, only 0.59 conceded, over 21 shots a match, a great pass completion, and once again, scoring a high number of chances compared to the average. And you've got teams in here like Bayern, Dortmund. I know it's not the Premier League, guys, but there's some tough competition. And then with PSG, well, I mean, you do what PSG do, don't you? I mean, we win the Trophy de Champion, we win the French Cup, we absolutely blitz Real Madrid in the Champions League. And the French League, I believe, is invincible. 32 wins, two draws coming in against Lyon and Reims there. We've got three players in the goals, three players when it comes to the average rating, and unfortunately not three in the assists, but we'll take it at two. Donnarumma, the most amount of clean sheets as well. And I will say, possession-wise, again, fourth place in the easier leagues, you can get that stat line. Most goals, nearly double of second place with Marseille, who, of course, now actually have got somewhat of a decent team and a very good manager. Most shots, 876. Fewer shots against, 152. Most dribbles, fewest conceded. And the most clean sheets. I will say clean sheet wise, Monaco and to be fair, quite a fair few teams or Lille as well were actually quite competitive. But when it comes to the goals again, guys, I will keep saying it. The goals are the reason you dominate all these games. Now, some people out there aren't going to be happy that it's not got 60% possession. But if you can sacrifice a bit of possession, you're going to get a lot more goals. That's the way I personally see it. And after I won a quadruple, went invincible, and I would imagine scored above four goals a game. I can't complain. Only 0.62 conceded, a great pass completion, a ridiculous amount of shots, a good tackle win ratio, and scoring way more than everybody else. And I know we are PSG. You could argue, Josh, you should be doing that. You're PSG. But we have done this now with every single team, ranging from PSG to West Ham, an underdog really in the Premier League. Leverkusen, a top six, a top four team, sorry, not top six, and Ipswich obviously are quite good in their league. But it does, it goes to show it works in any league and it's incredible. This Champions League final, we went down inside of three minutes and I thought we were going to get absolutely battered. But obviously we come back and we made them have one of the biggest collapses you'll probably ever see. It was a bit of a mix up here from Courtois, a gift almost for Colo Mani to make it 1-1. We then actually go and obviously get the first goal in an extra time. Dembele in the middle into Colo Mani to make it, what would that be, 2-1. Another mistake here, Rudiger, they've lost their head. They gifted us a Champions League final and one more goal here to make it 4-1. It was a wrapped gift. Of course, now over to your favourite part of the video, the Tactic Breakdown. If you are enjoying back home, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And if you enjoy the content that much I provide on here, you can come over and check out my channel in the description where I post tactics once every two days. Manager recreations and generic tactics. And also, if you've got a spare second, go and check out Jake's stuff as well. We both make fantastic content. He is the master of a rebuild. I think I, I like the tactics. I like the tactics. I feel like I'm good at the tactics. But if you want to get them, you can go over and check them out. But let's go through and talk about this right now. So let's go over with the sweeper keeper. That is going to be a defensive goalkeeper simply on tackle harder. So this is a bit of a unique sweeper keeper because sometimes I think to myself... Why would you use a sweeper keeper on defend? As it sort of sounds, seems a little bit counterproductive. But at the end of the day, sometimes just having that sort of risk-free option in goal is actually quite a good shout. The fullback on the right and on the left are going to be exactly the same. Both on attack, on take more risks. Cross from the byline, cut inside, stay wider, and also tackle harder. Both of the ball playing defenders, both on dribble more and both on tackle harder as well. Naps never afraid to have quite an aggressive back line, and to be honest, it's never done me wrong, so who am I to question it? The DM on the right is going to be set to support on tackle harder. On the left, exactly the same. So again, very easy to copy. One thing I've noticed about Naps' tactics, you probably have seen it as well recently, is simplicity is key. A lot of his tactics are pretty much mirrored, so the left and the right being exactly the same. This one obviously is a little bit different as you go to the front four, but the back six, is in terms of the DMs and the back line, is nice and mirrored, so easy to follow along with. The winger on the left is on Rome, close down more, tackle harder, and mark a specific position. That is going to be a D in brackets R, just to showcase that and on the right we are going to have hold up the ball run from position sit narrow close down more tackle harder and also mark a position which i will show you shortly that is an inside forward on attack and he is marking a d in brackets l now going up to the front two we are going to have a pressing forward on support simply on moving to the channels and next to him an advanced forward on attack simply on tackle harder now this obviously is pretty much a 4-2-4 or a 4-4-2, depending on if you push this winger up, or have this one a bit deeper. But it plays a really unique style, which is really fun to play. So it's all going to be based off a ticky tack up. On the balance mentality, we are going to underlap left, underlap right, pass into space, focus down the left and the right-hand side with a narrow attacking width. We're going to have a higher tempo, 
a shorter passing directness and simply run at defense with low crosses. Now again, low crosses on this game has been broken from the start. They're really, really accurate. Ping it into the box to your strikers. We've got two of them. It makes complete sense. In transition, we're going to counter press, we're going to counter, we're going to distribute quickly and simply roll the ball out. This means it will go to any of the fullbacks, the centre backs and potentially even the playmakers. And lastly, out of possession, the much higher line, the high pressing line of engagement, invite crosses, step up more, get stuck in much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. And that's going to complete for you boys and girls back home this fantastic 4-2-1-1-2 tactic or 4-4-2 or 4-2-4, however you see it with your eyes. I can see where, why it's called that though, because technically you've got your 4, you've got your 2, you got your 1, you got your 1, you got your 2. But you can have it in any sort of those formation names. If you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Check out the other wide variety me and Jake provide. I'll be seeing you in the next one.